Phones are on. I'm not going to get into this one. Welcome to the finance meeting for uh, June 7th uh, to discuss the Rockton City budget. Uh, Madam Clerk, item number one. Southeastern Regional School, Luis Lopez, Superintendent. Good evening, Ms. Lopes. Good evening. Anything you want to say? Uh, yeah, just um, uh, real briefly uh, to kind of just uh, summarize the budget. Uh, our, our budget for uh, this upcoming year is uh, 25,531,215, which is up 3.9% uh, from 2006. Our enrollment uh, is up 3.7%. Uh, Brockton makes up of, uh, approximately 63% of the uh, student population, 926 out of the 1,468 students reside in Brockton. So Brockton's assessment uh, request is 3,351,517, which is a, an increase of 398,420. Um, so I think with that one, I stop. And if there's any questions, I'd be glad to talk about the school, talk about the assessment. Or Council Farwell. I just have a thank you. Uh, I'd like to publicly say, uh, as I indicated before the meeting, I really appreciate you getting this information out. I know it's a financial obligation. I always like to know what I'm voting for, and uh, as I indicated to you privately, the layout of your budget presentation is very user-friendly, easy to understand, uh, not too, uh, too much paper and just enough information that you need. So many thanks, and we appreciate what, what the school offers to Good our children from Brockton. You know, you probably have a better shot at a high-paying job graduating from a low-tech school than you do from some Ivy League schools now. So, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number two. Library, Keith jo Coquette, Acting Director. Okay. Good evening, counselors. Anything you want to say? Um, I'd just like to say that this proposed library budget is going to enable us to uh, maintain uh, our essential services, and I'm happy to be able to report that um, approval of these figures will not only enable us to meet all anticipated expenses, but it will qualify us for our full state aid award awarded annually by the library commissioners. So um, that's um, a good step forward for us, and I'll be happy to answer any questions uh, any of you may have. Council Board? No, no, no. Council Sullivan. Uh, good evening. How are you, sir? Good evening. I, I've been on the council 11 years, and I've always asked the same question, so I'll ask it again this year to keep it consistent. In terms of uh, grant funding, um, I know we talked in the past about the Gates, the Bill and Melinda Gates. Um, we also talked, I think, about the Carnegie Foundation. Are, are, those, are those still being uh, looked at on an annual basis to see if we can benefit Brockton Public Library? Well, we are looking for grant funding uh, primarily through the uh, library commissioners. Um, we, we have a, a special grant uh, that's a, a two-year grant uh, to provide uh, STEM services to uh, young adults. Uh, to encourage interest in, in science, uh, mathematics, and, and so on. And so we're in the middle of uh, that grant. And um, we do try to keep our eyes open for uh, sources of money as they, uh, as they become available. Excellent. I mean, the library is such a real asset and a gym in the city. And I, I, do, I know Mr. Lindy and, and Mrs. Mona here. And again, thank you for all that you do to, uh, to help the citizens of the city of Brockton. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Councilor Rodriguez. Uh, good afternoon. How are you doing? Hello. Uh, this came up last year during the budget, and um, I, I see it again here on the, uh, on the personnel services side of things that we still do not have a library director. Are, yes. are, we, in the, uh, are we advertising for this position, in the process of hiring somebody, uh, looking for somebody, not looking for somebody? What's the... Well, yes, uh, it's, all, it's in process. Uh, there's been uh, a search uh, going on for uh, several months, and we do have um, uh, some people that have applied for the job, and uh, we are in uh, the uh, point that we're going to be arranging uh, interviews uh, in the near future. 
So you see uh, probably within the, the next few months or so getting somebody on board heading the library? Well, I would hope so. Um, I don't know exactly how long uh, the whole it might take. I mean, I, I guess it depends on how the interviews go, but um, we would hope uh, within uh, a fairly short time we'll have a new director on board. So you actually have been advertising on a, on a oh, regular yes. basis, looking for somebody, and you just what? So what's the? I mean, it it pays eighty nine thousand uh, dollars. Is that in line with what the uh, library directors make in uh, in library is? system as, as big as ours? I, I think it's a good salary. It's a good salary, but yet we're having problems somehow? Well, we, we have got um, interest. We have some qualified people that, that have uh, turned in uh, resumes, and uh, it's the whole process just needs to um, move forward. No, I, I mean, I don't have any issues here because I, I think you've done a wonderful job while, you know, basically acting as the, uh, the library director. It's just that you know, every time when you see a budget come in front of us and it says, you know, vacant position for the, mm -hmm. the, the head director, but yet there's the assistant acting as the director, you know, it, it somehow, you know, brings up, a, you know, it bring, the flag goes up basically. And, and we wonder why, you know, we have an, you know, an assistant acting as the director yet not have a director in place. And that's why I'm asking this. All right. Well, I'm confident next year you'll, you'll have a new director in here presenting right. to you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Council Barnes. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, how you doing? Hello. Uh, I just want. I'm just kind of looking through here, and um, I know that I had mentioned before, and I, I believe I spoke with you um, once or twice, and, and several of the other uh, library officials about possibly getting some security lighting or something at the east side um, branch, and I didn't know if that were to be incorporated in, in any of these um, like non-personnel expenses or how that would work or if that's still in play? Um, well, yes, I, I would hope we can add um, uh, perhaps a new light on the, uh, the back of the building uh, at, at East and... Uh, Actually, it was cameras. And cameras well, cameras, that's right. that's cameras were uh, the main thing. Um, I have, in fact, been uh, speaking with uh, the people over at ITC about helping us to add some cameras at the branch libraries mm -hmm. and they were in fact down at the main library just within the past month uh, we have been able to add five new cameras to the main library so that is an issue we're concerned with mm -hmm. um, we're working to uh, uh, move that forward to, to enhance uh, security both downtown and at both of the branches excellent okay thank you thank you very much thank okay. you Mr. Chairman. thank you council Council Sullivan. Mr. Chairman, I just had one quick follow-up uh, relative to Council Rodriguez's inquiry about the, um, the ongoing uh, application process. I, I myself was contacted by uh, someone that was very much interested, but the restriction of residency is, is in there um, so that the, the person that's hired has to live in the city of Brockton. And what this person indicated to me is that she probably wouldn't apply because like the town of Randolph or Brookline, they don't need to live in the confines of that district. So. I don't know if that is or isn't why the search is ongoing, but that was some information I wanted to share with you and my colleagues as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Choquette. Thank you. Item number three. Park Commission, Timothy Carpenter, Superintendent. <coughs> Good evening, Councilor. Uh, I do like to use this opportunity to uh, thank the employees of the Park Department. It's one of the few opportunities that I get a uh, public forum to do so. Um, so I would like to take this time to recognize and thank the employees of the Park Department for another year of hard work and dedication. Those assigned to DW Field Golf Course have worked tired, tirelessly to improve conditions at the golf course from winter tree removal to maintaining and repairing an aging irrigation system to an increased focus on agronomics I can confidently say that the golf course has never looked or played as well as it does today. To those assigned to the Parks Department, they have also shown a commitment to quality and work in face of the ever-growing demand for field space and conditions as well as an ever-increasing amount of parks that are the responsibility of the department. The dedication to the department is not limited to those in the field. My head clerk is really a critical cog in the wheel and her focus and attention to detail makes the department run infinitely more efficiently. 
I would also be remiss if I did not mention the hard work and dedication of the employees of the Public Property Department that focus three months a year to provide the residents of the city with two clean, safe and well-maintained pools. So as you can see, councillors, there are quite a few moving parts in operating the Park Department, but I feel that we are doing, as Councillor Sullivan is off to say, yeoman's work to get it all done. Uh, I will now answer any questions. Councillor Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, th Mr. Carpenter, how are you doing? Fine. Thank you. I just have a, a quick question for you because this is something that comes up on a regular basis. How do we go about getting some benches or places to sit at these, the various fields that we deal with here in the city? I was just down at the pig field um, last, either last Saturday or the Saturday before, and there was a ton of people in that place. Um, some of them were actually sitting on those barrels sideways, you know, uh, doing, a, doing a job to the, the barrels themselves, but and the superintendent of um, Southeastern Regional was just here, and I know that they run these projects on a regular basis, that perhaps we could utilize some of the students at the Southeastern to help build some benches so we can actually have some benches in these parks, because I think if we do, you would see uh, a major improvement even the way the, the the parks actually look because people wouldn't be wandering around all over the place trashing the place so how do we get these benches well we have um, a couple of different avenues um, one I have spoken actually I spoke to uh, Mr. Lindy a couple of weeks ago in a presentation that I gave at uh, the Parks Association annual meeting um, so he and I are going to work together to try and actually utilize um, Southeastern to uh, provide some of those benches um, the Park Department does have a memorial bench program for anybody that's interested to purchase and install a bench and have it memorialized for whatever they'd like to have on it, just about. Um, but and these were like, basically, I'm talking about little small had, bleachers, basically, right, not right. necessarily And then, benches. you know, the program is to try and um, invest in some new infrastructure here over the next couple of years to provide those spaces for people to, uh, to enjoy. And also, I mean, as it relates to PIC, um, one of the conversations that I've actually had with some guys at the at the field is that um, if somehow we were open, we were able to open it up and actually give those folks some ownership of the field, that perhaps that they could actually go out and seek out uh, funding sources, uh, sponsorships, or sponsors to help uh, sponsor the uh, a lot of the work that could be done in the field and kind of help those things out. So, have you had any sort of conversation with them with regards to that? Uh, to be honest, Councillor, I have not. Um, no one's really reached out to me. It's sort of the first that, I, that I'm really hearing about it. Um, you know, but, you know, a good example is the Keith Park Neighborhood Association, um, James Edgar Playground Association. Um, I'm always willing to work with um, those that utilize those facilities to help improve those facilities. Yeah, so perhaps that's a conversation that I need to have with those guys to approach you and see if Absolutely. we can do that. Okay, thank you, Mr. Carpenter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Council Lally. Hi, how are you? Good evening. Fine. Uh, I just had one quick question about, um, and this is uh, very coincidental because somebody talked to me or spoken about it today. Uh, Tukas Park, is there anything you have planned for uh, Tukas Park? Uh, Tukas, a couple of years ago, I think it was two years ago now, we redid all the basketball courts over there, okay. um, installed some new play equipment, and did some um, refurbishing of the play equipment that's down there. Um, Currently, there isn't um, an overabundance of usage on the field there, um, so there isn't any major plans over there, to be honest with you. Oh, we also redid the, um, the old tennis court over there a couple of years, too. Yeah, and I know, the, uh, I know the funding for McKinley went through this Correct. year, so yeah. we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go through. Maybe we can set up something where we can go check out Absolutely. some of the parks, something like that, yeah. right? Thank you. That's it. Councilor Rezek. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Mr. Carpenter. How are you? Fine, thank you. I have a couple of questions. Um, the first one's on the golf course. How are we doing since some, I, we raised our fees just um, what, a little over a year ago or almost two years now? So how are we doing? Have we, are we losing any people or do you feel we've um, brought in some, some new members or how, how um, are we doing? You know, Change is always difficult. 
um, you know, but the fact of the matter is the, uh, the costs associated with operating the golf course continually increase. Um, the increase that the Park Commission voted on this year was the first increase in greens fees in two and a half years. So um, we're trying to make up a little bit for some lost time there. Um, and initially, yes, I, I would say that there was um, some people that were, were upset by it. Um, but I can, I can say that I've seen those faces that were upset back at the golf course. Um, and we've actually um, started to draw a lot of people from surrounding towns. Um, we're finding a lot of people from Braintree, South Boston, um, Quincy are making the trip down here to play our golf course. Which is very good. That's what we like to hear. But can, do we, um, can somebody rent like a tent or do an event there from, we, do we have anybody that's doing that? I know that's a question that's come up to, that's been asked of me a few times. Um, in terms of private parties, that's, that's difficult if it's just a party. If somebody wants to have a golf outing there, oh. absolutely contact me. No problem. Okay, very good. Um, and then the other questions regarding um, the DW Fields Park. Um, first of all, can you just, I know a lot of people are watching now, I get a lot of calls regarding when the gates are closed or, and I know sometimes you're, you know, um, somebody from your department's working in there so it has to be closed, but um, I'll be honest, sometimes it blows up out of proportion. Um, so if you can just tell people like how, what the process is for the gates. So the gates Monday through Friday, um, are closed until 10 in the morning. The gates get closed in the evening by the police department. And then on the weekends, um, my staff on Saturdays has taken over opening the gates at noontime. Um, Sundays, uh, the opening of the gates at noontime is still um, something that we rely on the police department to do. Uh, generally speaking, I don't have staff in on Sundays. Um, or if I do, they're usually done by 10 o'clock. Um, and I think that additional two hours, a lot, a lot of times there are events there. Um, Saturday specifically, there's the kids' road races. You can't open the gates up earlier than noon. The kids' road races are basically from 10 to noon. Um, and that's a real safety issue. Um, so that's sort of the process right now. So if they're closed, there's, I mean, it's because they, were, they weren't able to open them or something's Correct. going on in there. Very good. Do you see, um, I also get a lot of questions regarding how doing some activities besides the kids' rose races, but things to actually bring in an income at DW. Is that something that you've looked into or have, I'm sure people have talked to you about. Um, is that something that's even an option? Um, one of the issues with DW, um, in terms of large events, is there really isn't any parking. I mean, it's really just a big issue. Um, so there are a lot of times where we have requests for larger events that we actually have to direct to other parks that have more parking. Um, so it, it's a difficult balance. I mean, this is the first year that um, there's always been, since I've been here at least, um, there's always been a permit application fee for the use of the gazebo area behind the maintenance facility. Um, and this is the first year that this, the Parks Commission has instituted an application fee for all applications to have any events in the park. Um, it's a nominal fee, it's $25, but um, $25 adds up over the years. Um, so, uh, and I know you're probably speaking about larger events that could bring in much larger uh, amounts of money. And <clears throat> I think it's something worth pursuing, but I think there are some infrastructure issues that need to be addressed before you could successfully plan for that. Okay, thank you. I, and I don't mean to ask you all these questions, but these are things that come up throughout the year and it's good for people to hear them directly from you. So thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Council Sullivan. <coughs> thank you. Good evening, Mr. Carpenter. How Good are you? Good evening. Fine, thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you, Tim, for all that you do. I mean, you're one of the, uh, the, the department heads that get back to me, you and Larry Rowley. I mean, instantaneously when I, when I make a call. So I want to thank you for what you do. 
Uh, I also like the idea of marketing. Um, you said you're getting people from Southie and, and Quincy. I've heard on the Sports Hub 98.5 many times radio ads for, for DW, so thank you for that. That's a, that's a good idea. In terms of two budget items, I just want to ask a question on um, one is the temporary seasonal. It was 39600 requested, and it was a zero line item by the mayor. Um, what, what ramification does that have? Is, is that like summer help, or what is that? It was a program that we were going to try and start last fall. Um, and to be honest with you, it was difficult to find people that were willing to do the work. Um, so it is basically, you know, it was a summer program. So right now, we currently have one individual um, who is a temp seasonal. Um, he started um, the, probably the second week of May. Okay. So we're sort of way behind schedule. And to be honest with you, it is a huge help. Um, and, th and that's at the golf course? Correct. Okay. It is only at the golf course. Um, you know, it, it is a huge help. Um, you know, I can, <clears throat> I can just tell you, every bare spot that we have on the golf course has been loamed and seeded, and that's a seasonal employee that's doing that. So the, the, the full-time staff is doing the daily maintenance, the cutting, the mowing, the, the setup of the that, golf yeah. course, that kind of stuff. And it's the, the sort of the detail work that um, that program really helped. Great. That's great to hear. And then my last question was um, on the second page, the, the line item. Um, actually, I'm sorry. It might be the last page. Uh, it, it was golf course improvement. Um, you requested 50 grand, and last year it was 50,000. Mayor came back at a, at a 39,000, almost 39,000 dollar decrease to 11. 1,794, and then if we look back at 2015, it's it's about a $19,000 decrease. That was a little over 30 grand. Um, what what I mean, 11 grand is better than zero. But what 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 is it that that $39,000 difference from your request to what was what was going to be allocated with the recommendation? What, what what does that really mean to to the to the upkeep of the golf course and in, in going to the summer months? Um, <clears throat> I would be. I wouldn't be truthful with you if I didn't say it's not going to be difficult. Um, it will be. Um, this fall, the, the council was um, good enough to let us lease equipment three years ago, a uh, brand new fairway mower, mm -hmm. a small area mower, and a large rough mower. This will be the last year of that lease, of that lease payment, which will free up some ability to, um, to supplement that particular line item. Um, you know. But you're better off changing the oil every 3,000 miles in your car instead of rebuilding the engine every six years. And honestly, what we've done over the last three years is rebuild the engine. And we're to the point now where we can almost just change the oil. Mm. Um, you know, we've established a solid stand of turf in the fairways, which were really not in great shape four years ago. Um, and a solid, healthy stand of turf takes less inputs than um, when you're trying to get turf back. So yes, it will be a struggle, um, but I think we're going to be able to manage. Okay. And my last question is, in the past, I know there was a collaboration between Brockton PD and the Avon police to that section of DW. Does that, does that still exist? Absolutely. It does. Absolutely. Great. Um, Thanks and again. It, it exists, and I, I'm just, yeah. no. no, go it ahead. It exists um, not only with the police departments, but also with the animal control agents from each town. Um, so it really is a very good working relationship. Are you seeing, talking about animal, are you seeing, I mean, I'm sure turkeys are everywhere. Are you seeing coyotes? Are you seeing some, some issues up there? Um, in the fall, we will see a lot of coyotes. Okay. Um, there's actually some koi wolves, I think, up in there too. Okay. Um, and I really wish they would eat more geese. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. <laughs> Councilor Farwell. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Kaplan. Good evening. No relation to the mayor, uh, by the way, for those who don't know. Uh, would you just take about two or three minutes and describe to the council the progress on the issue of the soccer fields, which affects Ward 5 and Ward 7, and, uh, and may I say the meetings that I attended, I was very impressed with the thoroughness with which the uh, Park Commission and, and you uh, proceeded on those projects, but I think it would be informational for everyone to hear that. Absolutely. So, um, you know, there is a great deal of need for soccer fields in the city. Um, I think it's a, you know, probably the most popular game in the world. Um, and I think the population of the city is trending towards more of a soccer um, playing populace. 
Um, so what the Park Commission has um, voted to do is to take O'Donnell's playground, uh, the ball field there, and what we'll do here shortly is put a couple of goals out there and hopefully this fall seed the infield. Um, it's something that I'm not used to, growing grass on the infield. Usually I'm struggling to get rid of it. Um, but um, so we'll try and convert that to a soccer field this fall. Uh, and then we're also pursu pr um, pursuing grant opportunities um, to do some work at Walker's Playground and convert Walker's Playground to what I hope will be a premier soccer facility. It would include one full-size um, soccer field as well as a, a youth-size soccer field and another futsal court similar to the one over at Edgar's, um, which is basically um, soccer on a smaller uh, hard surface. So it's sort of similar to indoor soccer. Um, so those are the plans that we have moving forward, hopefully within the next three years. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody else before we get back? Oh, Councillor Barnes, you haven't speak, spoken on this. Councillor Barnes. Thank you. Um, actually, when you mentioned Edgar, I thought about the splash pad. Um, are there any plans to maybe install any more splash pads in any of the other parks, number one? And number two, still anything with Finnegan and the, the, the water over there coming up? The, the fountain. Yeah. Um, to the best of my knowledge, that fountain is in some disrepair. Okay. Um, you know, and I think um, I honestly, um, the Park Department only took over Finnegan maybe two years ago now. This might be the second season of us having care and control of that. Okay. Um, I haven't, I'll be honest with you, I have not done too much investigation in terms of that fountain. Um, and in terms of other splash pads, um, they can be rather pricey to operate. Um, so I haven't really done too much more in investigating in terms of where else we could invest in a splash pad. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Anyone else? Thank you, Mr. Carpenter. You can stay right there. Uh, item number four. Cemetery. Timothy Carpenter, Superintendent. Do you have a statement? Or, uh, of course I do. Of course you do. <laughs> <coughs> Just for the DPW guys. <laughs> um, so uh, I would like to again take this time to thank those employees of the cemetery department. Um, to be perfectly honest, theirs is not an easy job. They're oftentimes dealing with people in the grips of grief and have always performed with respect and diligence. They are a dedicated group of four that makes every effort to always provide for an efficient operation and presentation. Just as a point of information, the cemetery performed 260 burials last year. That is just shy of one a day wow. in the 277 essentially operating days, and that's Monday through Saturday. So you're essentially looking at a burial a day up there, wow. and then maintaining the cemeteries on top of that. Again, not, all, <clears throat> not only those out in the field are the ones making the difference and contribution in running the department. From scheduling of funerals to keeping and entering records into our cemetery database, the cemetery department clerk accomplishes a great deal, and I would like to say thanks for all her hard work and effort. Speaking of effort, again, I would like to recognize all those individuals who work countless hours to prepare the city's cemeteries for Memorial Day, from cemetery department employees to park department employees to DPW employees to the veter two veterans that we have working in the cemeteries as part of the VA compensated work therapy program to the Brockton area ARC the efforts leading up to Memorial Day, I believe, really provided for what was a very successful presentation. Thank you. Councilor Ianeri. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Cobbett. How evening. are you? Um, and, a, and a quick comment uh, to you. Um, I have to indicate, um, as, as I've always been one that's in Melrose Cemetery because of my own family, lots that are there. You know, uh, over the last couple of years, it's been a great, um, a great honor to go through there to see um, just how your men have progressed in, in you as well uh, to maintaining the, uh, the cemetery from what we had some years ago. And I, uh, I, I truly mean that. Um, as you know, a few years back we had trouble there on a Memorial Day weekend where it was totally um, disastrous for a lot of people, but that's never happened again. The repeat of that has never happened, and, and I appreciate that. So, you know, uh, my full support. Um, question uh, to you, uh, because I know um, this came to me also through a couple of the funeral directors. And when they're scheduling a funeral, is it going through you or is it going through the part-time clerk? Who handles that part of it? Um, you know, the phone call, the initiation of, 
um, you know, um, scheduling the funeral, the timing, and everything. And I, I would hope that you know we're working with the funeral directors based upon what families are looking to have done as well, and not saying, well, we can't do that today. It's going to have to be tomorrow. That's a tough thing to do. You know what I'm saying? So I, I just want to have a little clearance on, on you know how that all works out, how it all breaks down. It is a difficult thing to do and what we've tried to do in order to facilitate that is to provide essentially a spot on the city website under the cemetery department obviously okay. um, that we ask and encourage funeral directors to check before they schedule anything with the family okay. because like I say we, I, have, I have three three men in, in, in the cemetery department right and to be honest, to do any, it takes at least a minimum of two and a half hours to dig. Right. Then you're, you know, placing and we, you know, so it's a long process. Right. And having three funerals in a day is just about the max that we can do. Okay. So what we've tried to do to ease any miscommunication there is provide a section within the city's uh, cemetery department website for funeral directors specifically where they can check the schedule and preemptively say, oh, geez, Melrose already has three on Tuesday. Okay. Maybe we should direct the family, if possible, to Wednesday. Gotcha. And, and they're all well aware of this site that they can, Absolutely. They can go on and they yeah. can check. I, and, the local. Yeah. Uh, the local funeral The locals, directors. exactly. Right. Yeah, I'm sure if there's one from outside of uh, the city of town, I, I can understand maybe a little communication gap yep. there. But uh, I just want to make sure that um, where it was coming from for me, and I'm not mentioning names, but... Um, you know, I just want to make sure that we're, we're accommodating because I, I know it's no easy task. It is not. As best as we can, sir. Right. And, you know, like I said, we, we, we perform and, and, and to this point, we've performed 260 burials this fiscal year, which it's, it's a lot. And, is, and, is, and is a lot. There's a lot, like you say, with the manpower that has to be, I mean, a lot has to be open and, and a lot's got to be closed in a timely fashion as well. So, you know, I understand that piece. But I just want to make sure that, the, you know, there was a good communication working relationship with with everyone within and it seems that there is and I'm glad to hear that there is the site where they can go on and take a look appreciate it thank you thank you mr. Chairman. thank you council council Cruz thank you uh, mr. chairman uh, actually this piggybacks a little bit on what councilor Rianieri was uh, was asking about I've had some funeral directors in conversation uh, on the weekends uh, well Saturdays do you only schedule one funeral or it depends on the section to be honest with you sir um, we can accommodate up to three, um, except for in single double E, because single double E, um, we intern people right next to each other. Um, so to have um, two open plots poses a safety hazard. Um, and so what, what we try and do is as we open one, we'll try and fill on, on the one that is already open. So single double E is an area that we can really honestly only do one a day. Um, and it's simply because of how the section is laid out. And this next question actually may be something that the board has already looked at. The feeling that I had from talking with some of the funeral directors is that we charge quite a bit less than most other cemeteries for, and certainly, you know, we're not looking to to hurt anybody who's in a, a, ter a difficult situation, obviously, with a, with a death, but that we charge quite a bit less than most of the cemeteries around. Is that still true? Has the board looked at that, or uh, last is that true, or is it just something that... The last directors? time we reviewed rates um, with an eye towards changing them was three years ago. It was under the previous administration. Um, and at that point, we took a survey of where our prices were in relation to everyone else's and, and you're right we are still um, we are still for lack of a better term the cheapest game in town um, and I guess my know, question would be are we covering the expenses with what we charge yes so we're I, in I a feel we are you know um, the way the money gets broken up um, in terms of how much goes for perpetual care and how much goes to sale in lots and graves. Um, I think our, our department functions um, very well at, um, I mean, obviously more income is always terrific, but like you said, you don't want to price your game yourself out of the ball game. Um, and you don't want to hurt people. In, no, I mean, certainly the cemetery is a service that we yeah. 
we as a city have to give to our residents. But uh, there was a concern, and I think maybe a few years ago we weren't on the weekends able to do for manpower needs. Were you not able to do m multiple funerals or on the weekends? For the past three years, we there has been a limit of three a day. Um, I, I can understand three. But I mean, that's 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 where we're at. I mean, it's it's. It's almost a mathematical equation at three a day. Um, it's just, and you, you don't like to leave, you don't like to pre-dig because there aren't gates there. There's no security. Heaven forbid somebody falls in in the middle of the night. You, you put yourself in a difficult situation. Absolutely. Um, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council Cruz. Council Isaac, followed by Council Lally. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, some of my questions were already answered. Um, I have been contacted by... Um, also funeral directors but maybe um I'm sh do you s do you go to the um cemetery boards meet are you on the Absolutely. board with them yep. do you know when the next one is i haven't been able to get that information um we are still working on scheduling our next meeting um i'm hoping that it'll be um if not later this month um early in july um because <clears throat> with the revolving fund that you guys all approved um the other day i, I would like to ask the cemetery board of trustees um, for some funds from the revolving fund um, and that can only happen technically after the 1st of July. Okay, can you let, can you let me know Absolutely. or I'll follow up with you but yep. I know some of the um, people that contacted me want to know when it would be so. Absolutely. Thank you. You good, Councilor? Thank you. Councilor Lally. Hi, um, I just have something, you know, I, you might not have this information on you but uh, I'd, I'd heard this and so I wanted to, wanted to hear if it was true. I heard that uh, per capita, the cemetery bring the cemetery department brings in the most money to the city. I think that's a dangerous road to go down um, because I don't necessarily think it's true. Um, <clears throat> um, I think there are probably a lot of other departments that actually probably bring in a lot more money, and yeah, what you have to money. understand yeah. is the way that. Um, the money that the cemetery department does bring in is broken up. A lot of it, the cemetery department and the city doesn't have access to. So two thirds of every, it's a thousand dollars minus the cost of the deed for a lot. And two thirds of that money goes into a perpetual care account. And then the cemetery department only receives insur or, uh, interest payments off of that perpetual care. So you know, you're looking at, what is that, $780 or whatever that is, that the city really doesn't ever see out of that $1,000. So I think if you did the total numbers, maybe it's close, but the city doesn't actually have access to a lot of that money. Yeah. Thank you. I was just, just idle curious. I heard it, and I, I said, that can't be true. But uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Council Lally. Council, is there any other questions before we go to follow-up? Council, any other follow-up? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just, a, just a quick follow-up. In, in uh, lieu of the fact of how we sell our lots, are we, I, I, how can I really phrase it, are we still selling them as it be one, two, three, four, or are we one, two, three, four, top, you know what I mean, bottom, top? Uh, we do not go double deep. Double deep uh, we are side by side. Okay. Uh, we don't have the equipment to go double deep. Okay. Um, and um, because of the age of many of our cemeteries, um, and how close, I mean, like the Union Cemetery, everything is so packed in. And right, that was right. back in the days when I'm sure most of those graves were hand dug. Right. And mm -hmm. even our small backhoe is very difficult to get into a lot of these locations. Right. So to have a larger machine to be able to go double deep kind of doesn't make sense. The, the only one you'd probably be able to do it would be Melrose if you ever had to do it. Because if you had a to. Because you more space. Yep. If you had to do it that way. Yeah. Okay. Just want, I just wanted to know. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councilors, any questions? I just had one comment, Mr. Carpenter. Last night when Mr. Farrell, Dave Farrell, came before us, uh, Council Rodriguez had asked a question of a position. Uh, it's called the Veterans Grave Marker. Uh, hopefully down the, down the road it will be funded. But the way that David explained it to us is anything, any death from 1990 going forward is, is known. The date is there. My thought when I was driving here today when I knew you were coming before us is, is when you're, you're digging a hole for a grave. If you happen to notice a grave that was a veteran prior to that time, maybe some sharing of collaboration might make sense. Absolutely, and um, in working with Mr. Farrell for the flags on Memorial Day, um, we did a little more investigation into our current cemetery software, 
And what we found is that we can actually um, designate um, veterans and then pull up reports for all the people that were, you know, just a report of people that were veterans. So what we've now done is um, on our intake info that we ask from um, funeral homes is to indicate whether that person was a veteran or not. Okay. And therefore, we can enter it into our cemetery software and whether it's in the, um, in the wintertime with wreaths or whether it's in the spring with flags, we'll be able to generate a report for everyone that we have. Oh, that's great. Um, so that we hopefully don't miss anyone. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. The next agenda item is going to be uh, Mr. Robert Malley from the Parking Authority. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Malley. Do you have a statement? Evening, no, not really a statement. Um, very briefly for the uh, new councilors here, uh, the Parking Authority budget is uh, self-funded. Um, the money for our budget comes from our reserve funds rather than from the general fund. Uh, and that being said, uh, the uh, services and good sections of our budget are uh, level funded. Uh, the only uh, increases in the budget are the negotiated uh, contractual obligations in the uh, personnel section. And uh, I have gone over this with um, Councillor Sullivan. Right? The part-time uh, line item is a bit too high there. Uh, we're looking for a cut of $64,700 64, to a total of $138,79. And that reflects the salaries for the parking control officers that are paid out of the uh, revolving fund rather than out of this budget. And I'll take any questions. I think you're the only department head that comes in asking for a cut. So. <laughs> Councilor Farwell. Uh, good evening, Mr. Malley. Good I evening. don't think people realize quite how well the parking authority does. So. Could you elaborate on the current balance in the, in the funds that, uh, that you retain and uh, just elaborate a little bit on that? Certainly. Um, yeah, we, we've, uh, in the last few years, it, it's improved considerably, um, the, the finances of the parking authority. Uh, right now, our, uh, well, our projected budget for this year is somewhat in excess of 700000 a little over $700,000 for the budget. I think the uh, balance in those uh, reserve accounts uh, combined is about 1.1 million, right? I'm sorry, 1. It's 1.1 million, yeah. And um, we also carry uh, in our capital fund, uh, which is rollover from enforcement, uh, roughly $500,000 is being carried over now. Hopefully so. the mayor's not listening to that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you brought it up. I didn't. <laughs> Jay knows what's there. Thank you. <laughs> Councilor Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Malley. Good evening. And thank you for bringing that to attention, the 64,700. I think it's important. Um, and, and thank you for what you do. My only question is, and it's not necessarily pertinent to this year's fiscal year, but with the DA's office going to the new building, it's going to be a lot more police officers, stadies there, which is a good thing for Brockton. I've had some conversations with DA Tim Cruz. Um, they're going to utilize, uh, uh, hope to utilize some portion of the parking garage. I just want to know if you could, and maybe it's privy information, but if not, if you could maybe share a little initial thoughts on how that's going to work. No, it's public. It's, it's public information. We are in the process of negotiating with uh, the, with the uh, DA's office uh, to use uh, part of the garage. And right. is it going to be a significant number of spaces? Or? Yes, it will be a significant number of spaces. Okay, good. Right. good. And now they have some property that we can probably use too. Yeah. Right. So, so it's kind of a there's win -win. a negotiation going on. I met with him and the mayor uh, maybe three weeks ago. Excellent. And then I talked to the DA again yesterday. Okay. Right. And we'll be together in the next week or so and see Perfect. if we can hammer out a deal for that. Awesome. Thanks for the update. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. That cut, oh, somebody will propose, will somebody take that amount down? <laughs> I got it. Make that yeah. proposal <laughs> tomorrow night. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next item, Madam Clerk. Public property, James Casseri, Superintendent. Good evening, Councillors. How are you? I just have a uh, small opening statement. I'd like to. Um, for the benefit of the newer counselors and just a refresher course for the other counselors of the functions of our department. We're a multifunctional department. Um, we have a custodial staff that's 
required to maintain not only this building but the Council on Aging as well as the War Memorial Building. Um, we have a public property maintenance department that consists of plumbers, electricians, HVAC guys, carpenters, I don't want to leave anybody out, and their manager <coughs> who um, have performed many, many projects this year. I haven't estimated the cost of the savings to the city, but I would say it's well in the hundreds of thousands of dollars if we had to privatize any of that and accomplish some of the projects that we have. I have those on a list here if later on anybody wants to talk about that. Um, and then there's the code enforcement inspectional services where we, we do permits, uh, we do code enforcement, we respond to emergencies as well as the maintenance department does. Cars crash into buildings, fires at night, um, electrical emergencies. Um, so we're responsible also for all of the zoning and the zoning board. And then there's the clerical part of our department that processes all of the permit applications, answers thousands of phone calls. In fact, we have, I, I want to say, I have it down, down in here, probably close to 14,000 permits we did this year which re would require twice as many phone calls and twice as many office visits as that. So that just to give you an idea of what we do, um, and with that, I want to thank my entire workforce, all of them. I didn't want to say especially anybody, but all of my workforce, I couldn't do it without them, and, and they do yeoman's work, as the councilor likes to say. So with that, I'll take any questions. Councilor Ranieri. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Commissioner. How are you? I'm well. How are you, Council? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for uh, <clears throat> all that you do and all that the uh, staff does uh, each and every day to keep our buildings in operation. I know it's not easy, and uh, there's some difficult times, and they're old buildings, and you do the best that uh, the best that you can. Um, just in looking um, through this, and I guess I probably wouldn't <clears throat> find it, but my question is: um, RFPs on like the Howard School and Whitman School and where are we at with those buildings that obviously we're still paying costs um, and have ne ne not been successful any time we've sent or put out RFPs for them? We haven't put an RFP out for a school in a couple of years now. We didn't get the response that we wanted and we're looking into doing it again. Okay. Um, the use is always a question. The Lincoln School is a tough one. Right. Right. Um, I think that the Howard School could be very attractive to its zone C2, so it's all ready to go business. Okay. And the uh, Whitman School is in terrific shape for maybe office condos of some kind, the parking lot's mm. ready to go, and so we're looking into that right so now. So you're looking maybe within the next six months to, uh, to have something back out there and see what we can do to... to we'll look at that. I'm concept. not saying that we want the buildings to go away, but we just keep putting the cost into it just to do what you have to do to winterize it and, and all of that and yeah. it's it, it's costly and I think they they do need to they do need to move along so yeah okay and, and just in final uh, mr. chairman just one quick question uh, if I made uh, to him uh, the West Side library windows that donation came to us over a year ago they're going in now I believe are they yeah okay yeah. I hadn't seen with it you know it's been over about a year so yeah so that's all worked out and everything yes and that was okay. the library foundation running that show right but so. they had to come through to you to make they sure they had to go through us they had to follow procurement laws That's and exactly. prevailing wage okay. and permitting and having licensed contractors and so okay so it's happening okay yeah. great thank you thank yeah. you mr chairman thank you Councilor. council farwell uh good evening uh i have just a couple of comments and a couple of questions uh, and and this time i hope the mayor is listening and i know mr condon is here but as we launch into the urban renewal project, and this could be said of all of our city departments, but yours and, and DPW especially who are here tonight, it just seems to me we're going to get busier. We're going to have people inquiring about potential projects, properties that might be rehabilitated. And, and I'm looking at your uh, organizational chart, which really is under your personal services. We don't have a deputy superintendent of buildings. So when you're on vacation, to which you're entitled, or you're out sick, who handles that work? 
Um, I would think if you ask any counselor here or any department head, if they can't get hold of me, they get hold of my office manager. And if it's a question she can't answer, she gets hold of me. So I'm never on vacation, counselor. Okay. But, but basically you rely on uh, a clerical person to pick up the slack when you're not there. I rely on somebody that has 33 years of experience and knows pretty much everything there is to know about how the department runs, yeah. Well, well I guess that's my point, and, and without, because the names are not important. The titles right. of the positions and the workload that people have, to me, is everything, because people can change positions. But it just seems to me that, and I noticed a letter in here about uh, changes in, in a title for a clerical worker. It just seems to me that that's not unreasonable. Uh, now, we can't increase an appropriation. We can't order the mayor to do anything. But I would hope that you would, would stay in this issue of what will the building department uh, staffing look like as we go into the urban renewal program because it, there will be a lot of work to do. There will be a lot of paperwork. Uh, even your clerical staff are entitled to vacation. So when somebody's out, there are only two people left. I, I've been there when I've seen the number of people that come up to the counter. It's, it's, uh, it's quite extraordinary. And uh, I, I hope you'll stay in that issue because, uh, you know, I launched into to something of a comparison yesterday between the schools and the municipal side. And we do a lot over here with very little. Yeah. I guess that's the only way to put it. And, and uh, it's only going to get more challenging. Yeah, we're a very busy department. As I said, um, we did 7,352 building permits this year. Um, 2,353 plumbing and gas permits. 1,953 wiring permits. 255 inspectional permits. Those are CIs and trenches. 304 zoning board applications. And the, all of those total, the total I came up with is that's a total of $2,008,000 into the city. So if you total those up, it's uh, an est I estimate 14,000 visits to my counter and double that in phone calls. And the clerical staff is also has to do their daily chores of uh, making deposits, processing permits, and going about the business. So it's a, an extremely busy department. Well, just in conclusion, I, I'm all about fairness and equity. And I think if we have people performing at a high level uh, with demands for services and highly technical uh, work that has to be done and a high degree of accuracy, uh, then that needs to be reflected. And, uh, and certainly the staffing has to be adequate because nothing will turn away a developer more than putting in a request and not getting a timely reply or, or having a problem with getting permits. So uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Was that Councillor? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Barnes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, hello, uh, Mr. Commissioner. How are you? I just want to ask a, a, I guess, a breakdown question, if you can. So if I'm reading this correctly, your department requested, I guess, just a space holder for the capital other public property capital outlay, but the mayor requested 115,000. Am I reading that right? 115,000 is for the upgrade of the elevator. Okay. The elevator here at in City this? Hall. Yep. Oh, okay. I got that. It came very, very late. In fact, it came in the 11:30 hour of the of the budgets being prepared. In fact, the budgets may have been prepared when I uh, let J uh, Jay and the mayor know that. The elevator company had been here to do some repairs, and they they gave me an estimate of what we really should be investing in the elevator this year, and that's what that line item is. Okay. And um, okay. So when do you expect that work to start happening then? I'm going to have to talk with Mike Morris and see what bidding process m might have to take place, or if if they're on the state bid list, if I can simply allow them to go ahead with the work. I'm not quite sure on that, but. Im immediate, if the budget is approved, uh, we'll go for it right away. Okay, great. That's great. Um, and I guess to follow up on something Councillor Fowles said, um, Councillor Rodriguez actually put something in my head about the permits and who signs off on permits and things when you're not there. So is your head administrator? If, 
authorized I've to do that? I've only taken a week vacation two times in the eight, eight years I've been here. Most of the time I'm only gone for two or three days, so most of the time it can wait. If it can't wait, if it's something that has to be signed immediately, um, April will give me a call and I will authorize her to stamp my signature and she initials it, that she stamped it. Okay. So it still has your, your oversight? Yep. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Thank you. Councilor Isaac. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Cassieri. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Good. I have a quick question. It's, it has nothing to do with my ward, but it's a question that comes up from constituents a lot, and it's not uh, in the budget either, but 45, I believe it's 45 West Elm Street, right? What? 47. 47. It's right. What is going on with that? Uh, it's pretty much what you see. It's sitting there. It's it's secure, it's not falling down, but it's definitely, uh, we would love an investor to come along and uh, decide to do something with it. So it's... We, we keep an eye on it and we maintain it, make sure people can't get it in and out, but it's definitely one of our problem properties downtown. Mm -hmm. is, is it city owned? Is it ours or...? I believe we acquired that building recently, yeah. Recently. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Councilor Sullivan. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Kasiri. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, last night, the mayor was, uh, to his credit, was, was talking about changes uh, that are going to be implemented on B21. And one of the things that, that um, happened uh, as a result of that is a lot of it's going to fall now on you in your department relative to the stadium and to the Shaw Center. And I just wanted to know, I mean, you, you, you're doing a great job. A lot of people say that I say yeoman's <laughs> work. But what, what, what I'm trying to figure out, Jim, is, is are you comfortable? I mean, you don't have necessarily, no department has the exact manpower that they need. But are you comfortable with bringing on that added duty and task? Well, I think what the mayor was talking about is for the rest of this year, if there are any construction projects, uh, maintenance projects that take place at the stadium or the Shaw Center, that he would like me to keep an eye on them and have some oversight on them. During the course of this year, he, I believe, I'm not, I don't want to speak for him, but I believe what he was saying is working with you the council coming up with a plan because I believe in 217, Jay will own that. Is that correct? Okay. Okay. Um, but he wants to come up with a plan where um, the public property department may take over the maintenance of that facility, which would require a plan. So we have from now till then to come up to with a plan. To figure out what the, the best practice will be. Going to be talking with me, and uh, he was talking about with um, the city planner, who w might run the planning events, and coming up with some kind of strat strategy on how we can run that facility because it's it's a beautiful facility. It's been there for about 10 years now, and there's a lot to it. It has an elevator, it has extensive plumbing and electrical, it has sprinkler systems, it has refrigeration systems, kitchens, ovens, so there's a lot there that has to be looked at and has to be maintained. It's our investment and, and um, he's trying to formulate a plan on how we can best maintain that facility. Okay, but we have some time to really formulate that. Correct. Okay, and the last thing, just to kind of follow up with Concee and Erie, as you know, I mean, for 11 years I've been saying the Whitman School is near and dear to my heart. And last week when, when Council Fowell and I did the resolve about code enforcement, I mentioned that there's broken windows there in graffiti. Councilor from Ward 2, Monaghan, is assisting me with the graffiti, but I just wanted to see if there's anything that can be done to, to address the two broken windows on the Manamit Street side. Yep. Thank we'll you. Take care of it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Any other questions? Uh, speaking of which, Councilor Monaghan did call me earlier. He's home ill tonight. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Kassiri. I uh, think you can stay right there. Next item, please. The War Memorial, James Kassiri, Superintendent. Good evening. Any statement on the War Memorial? Uh, we did. Uh, one of the projects that public property has been working on at the War Memorial is in recent years we've, we've made the, it the home for veteran services and it is now the home for the um, BEMA. Um, we did what we built what is called an, an emergency operations center. Um, we put multiple 
computers in there, uh, multiple TVs and a computer service system which required a new AC system so that now when there's an emergency in the city of Brockton, a big snowstorm coming or a hurricane or whatever, we have a place to go that's all set up, all Wi-Fi and, and ready to go. And we also have a, we invested in a generator last year that in the event that building loses power, we can simply plug that generator in and keep that building going. So during an emergency, we can uh, coordinate the DPW, the fire department, police department, public property, and all the necessary agencies that would respond to any emergency. Other than that. Any questions, questions? Councilor Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Caseri. Um, I was pretty much, in, I was very involved with the War Memorial during the Harrington years as we were putting the resources back into that facility to turn it into a real life function, you know, functioning function facility here in the city. Uh, I know that there's a lot of uh, uh, activities going on in terms of BEMA and some of the other things that are doing there, that are going on there. But the basis of that whole facility was to create a facility in the city that we could actually uh, as the old saying goes, that it would be a money maker for the city, you know, bringing in some resources and things like that uh, in terms of functions. But to date, it's not very clear as to how uh, a taxpayer, or a resident of the city would actually go about getting the, uh, the proper permits to utilize that facility because it's not really very clear. I mean, I, I remember uh, there was an instance last year where the mayor said that the that the committee was coming together to put together some sort of um, an application process that they, they were going to be utilizing to use the spaces. But to my knowledge, it hasn't been done yet. Um, there's a perception out there that that facility continues to be for certain individuals, certain groups to use, but yet it's not being made available to the community at large. Um, I, for instance, uh, had a real tough time one time when I was putting together a a small crime um, uh, forum in the sense on, on, on the crime going on in the city, I had a real tough time just acquiring that space because I was told that, you know, they try to keep uh, political activities off of it in the sense where, uh, when I think about it, a city councilor can hold meetings in just about anywhere as long as it's meetings just to kind of inform the community. But for some odd reason, it's not very clear. It's not very clear and there's not a clear process that actually uh, has taken place in the city to to inform the community how they go about uh, you know getting the application in the process to uh, to be able to rent the facilities to use it for what it was basically intended at least for when I was around with the with the Harrington administration right well the idea that it will be a money maker I I don't think it will be a money maker um, the idea that we have people in there using it all the time, it, it actually is healthier for the building that I have people in there and I'm informed when there's problems and we keep the, the building uh, serviced correctly. But as far as anybody being able to use the building, all they simply have to do is call, uh, I believe uh, you'd call the mayor's office and you would go and fill out an application and that application would go to the Board of Trustees. I'm not in charge of how the building is used. Um, nobody is excluded and the Board of Trustees will take that application and they will discuss how it will be done, whether they'll, they're, it's necessary to have police there, um, the fees, how many custodians you need. Every, every event there requires custodial services before and after uh, if there's going to be alcohol served especially, it requires police depending upon how many people, maybe multiple police. So it's not, a, it's not like we make money. I mean, they, they have to pay details and they have to pay custodial fees. But that's all done through the Board of Trustees. I, I really don't have much to do with that at all. Well, well the reason why I bring it up is because it, you're the, uh, the person standing in front of in us. Charge kinda, of, right. uh, you're in charge of that. And, yeah. uh, and like I said, I had a real tough time just getting the facilities to hold a community meeting in the place. Well, that would be through the Board of Trustees, Council. You know, and somehow the board wasn't meeting or whatever the deal was, and it, it was a long process just to get, to, get, to get the place. And I think it's important for the, uh, 
I mean, if it's, if it's available for community use, it should be available to everybody. And then there should be a process in place that everybody would be able to follow, knowing when the meetings take place so that they actually can kind of understand that. Well, all I can say is that uh, if they call the mayor's office and they want to use it, they can, they're told on the process. And I don't see that it's, it's a very difficult process at all. I would is, disagree. Is the board um, uh, currently constituted properly? I mean, there's actually enough bodies on that board? Yes. Okay. There are. Yep. All right. Thank you, Mr. Kassari. You're you, welcome. Mr. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Barnes. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you mentioned actually about uh, when the events are happening, paying for the police and uh, detail and custodians. So, and I'm looking on here, and then there's no kind of breakdown for staff <laughs> over there, but I'm looking here for the overtime. Is that what that's for? Is that what that's allotted to? Overtime there is for, it could be anything. It could be a, a pipe burst on a, on a Saturday and I have to send a plumber over there. It could be that the grass has grown and it's been raining all week and there's going to be an event on Sunday and I want it to look nice, so I'll send the custodians over there on Saturday to mow the lawn. Okay. It's for the maintenance of the building. Okay. All right. And um, just, uh, I, I guess... Anything on here for like false alarm, like the alarm, false alarm, or any charges by the fire department or police department for any false alarms? Would that be on here, or, uh, or preparing for something of that nature like that? I don't believe we we used to have an uh, issue with the alarm system. It's since been corrected, and I don't think we've had an alarm in quite some time now. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. Thank you. Thank You're you, welcome. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Rezac. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kasseri, in this, um, what we're looking at the budget for the for the war memorial, is there anywhere where's where it shows the income that has come in. I mean, it has been rented out to a few the, different organizations in the city. I mean, we've gone to events. That is a revolving fund through the mayor's office. So That's not part of this budget. It was in front of you last FinCom. So that's in, in that, okay. Right. And the overtime, I know Council Bonds just asked, but the overtime, so that wouldn't be for the custodians that are, that because somebody has to be in the building during <coughs> these events. So that wouldn't no, be in No, I this? think that when you want an event, they calculate the custodians and they calculate the police officers, and if you want the event, you, you pay for those services. Correct. Okay. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Councilor. Anyone else? Councilor Studensky. Yes, sir, I want to laud the uh, committee for having such a great mission statement. Provide accommodations, auditorium, banquet hall, and kitchen for veterans and civic groups for social and civic meetings for the betterment of the city. To maintain memorial rooms for memorial services, maintain historical rooms and the library. And when we walk through those doors out front, if you look up, you'll see why the building was built, mm -hmm. what it's all about. And I laud you for what you've done in fixing it. And I laud your commission for overseeing it. Make sure there's no problem. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, Councilor. Thank you, Councilor. Anyone else? Thank you, Mr. Kassiri. Thank you. Next item, Madam Clerk. DPW Commissioner Lawrence Riley, Commissioner. Good evening, Mr. Riley. Council, just uh, so you know, there are obviously about eight different budgets here. This is, right now we're doing the Commissioner's Office. Um, good evening, Councilors. Um, yeah. I'd just like to thank all my staff um, in all the divisions because when we've had an emergency, everybody stepped up to the plate. Actually, they're calling me saying, Larry, how can we help? So you know some of the emergencies that I've had over the last year. I mean, I don't really have to get into them, but it, it, it has been a full complement of the DPW pulling together and getting these done. So with that, um, with my admin budget, it's pretty much level funded. Uh, and I'll take any questions. Any questions on the office, councillors? <coughs> Councillor Farwell. I, I guess I would just make a comment to Mr. Rowley that what I said about the uh, building department certainly applies to your department. I, I think as we go through the urban renewal plan, there will be a lot of data that's collected, a lot of consultation with you and your staff. There will be a lot of work uh, in terms of uh, the underground utilities that may have to be addressed as we improve the downtown area, roads that have to be resurfaced, coordination of resources, and uh, I, I appreciate the times that you have always been very uh, responsive to any questions I've had and also to your staff. Well, thank you, Councilor. 
Thank you, Councillor. Councillor, are you all done, Councillor Fowell? Yes, thank you. Councillor Ajak. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Rowley. Um, quick question. I don't have my last years to compare, but Director of Operations, is that a new position or is that a, yeah. it was already there? Did you no, know? this is a new position. position. That's um, where I was doing every division. I needed some help, and um, he's working directly under me now. He's called the Director of Operations. So um, does this position covers the different departments? It, it covers the whole DPW. The whole DPW. Yes, it does. So when I'm out or on vacation, which I'm the same as Jimmy just said, he'll be in charge. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Councilor Sullivan. I, I thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, again, Mr. Riley, I just want to thank you. I mean, you, you, you're really a great example of a department head, in my humble opinion. When I call you, Larry, you, you, you get back instantaneously, and it runs the gamut, right? I mean, it runs the gamut from dealing with plow issues to trash pickup to street lights to uh, on Harvard, Harvard Street, there was uh, grass about this high. I called you because people were putting drugs there. It was cut the next day. So I just I want to thank you uh, for what you do and your staff. And uh, really, you're shorthanded, but you do really do a great job. So thank you for what you do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before we move on to the next department, I guess I'll take a minute myself. I want to thank you for so much that you do. But as I look at your introduction here, I actually have received three phone calls this week, all three telling me what a pleasure it is to drive on West Elm Street. And when I tell them that's just the temporary, <laughs> when I tell them that's just the temporary, they were made. Yeah. So. Um, no. And I have to tell you that when I look down, I see those numbers and think, oh, but then I find out they're calling to tell me they were happy to drive on West Elm Street. Well, that, so that's, thank that, you so that, much. That's good to hear. And that's going to look a lot better towards the end of the year exactly. with the new sidewalks, trees, new lighting. Um, hopefully we're going to get it done this, this year. It may go into next year, final paving, but it is. It's a lot, it's a lot better than what it was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, item number nine. DPW Refuge, Lawrence Rowley. Okay. Um, Councilors, I do. I thought engineering was next. Did she say refuge? Did you say refuse? Refuse is next. Well, I, I would. I'll find that after. But I would like to say that. Um, I don't have much of a statement on this. This is pretty much level funded. We had to tweak a few line items because of the cost of disposing some of the um, TVs and things like that. But I do have to get out to all of you that subject to tonight and the funding stays there. We have the summer youth program again this year. Um, we've already have it on the web, but if there's anyone that you know that wants to work the summer, um, July and August, it's 20 hours a week. It's ten dollars, and the ten dollars for the laborers, fourteen dollars for a, a foreman. Um, I'd really pre appreciate your help to get that out there, so we can get this going. That's great, Council Lally. Do I still qualify? <laughs> <laughs> you, you do. <laughs> I um I actually I actually did this a couple of summers ago and I just wanted to say that it is a uh, it is a good program a really really good program and the Don't difference is noticed the uh, the cleanup the uh, the people do yeah it it, it it what they'll be doing is um, picking all the trash along the parks streets and also all the weeds and the sidewalks we try to have them do Don't last year it worked out great they did a great job. Well, sir, Councilor, Councilor Barnes. Uh, yes, not really a question, but just um, a, a, a quick moment of commendation. I want to thank you, too, for also um, all the attention that you show me when I call you um, with certain things and certain specific um, things that could have been a problem, but you, you put out those flyers for me and for the residents of the, of the city, and I want to thank you. And I also want to thank the Refuse Department for always picking up my questionable trash. Um, I uh, sometimes have a problem putting it out on time, but they've always been patient with me. And I just want to thank you and your department for, again, all that you all do um, with such strange, strange resources and, and making them uh, fit and appropriate for the entire city. So thank you, Mr. Raleigh. I do appreciate you. Thank you. That's nice, nice to hear. I'll say Councillor, Councillor uh, Sullivan. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Riley, I don't know if this would be to you or to Mr. Sullivan, but um, I think it was last year this, this body adopted the shopping cart ordinance. And I know Pat, Pat Sullivan and I have had some conversations. I was wondering if, if this could just get a quick status update on that. 
Please. if you don't mind. No, mind no. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Sullivan. Good evening, Councillor. Like your last name. Thank you. It's a great one. You too. <laughs> <laughs> yep. uh, as far as the shopping cart ordinance, uh, as you know, everything went through. And uh, we're working right now on notifying the stores and, and uh, of what the requirements are going to be, mainly labeling the carriages and putting phone numbers on the carriages uh, in case they get lost. In the meantime, though, we do, uh, if we get the call, we're still treating it like we used to, okay. which is we just go and get it yep. and either bring it back or, you know, we do talk to the stores. I know... Uh, after the ordinance, that's going to push more of the responsibility to that to the actual store to go out and get it or we'll find them, that, that type of situation. But uh, right now, you know, we just want, we want the carriage to go away. So if somebody has a complaint, we just put it on the list and go get it when we drive by. That's Excellent. So, so it's just an ongoing process right now, but it, it will be formulated in the near future. It is. As far as implementing everything and, and having all the signage and, and the notifications, that will be done soon. Okay. Thanks again, Mr. Sullivan. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Azak. Thank you. Um, I can't not thank you also. You, I, you're one of my favorite departments, every branch of it, whether it's refuse, <laughs> water, and every single one of them you guys do a great job so thank you you're always there and you always answer our questions and you're there to help us so it's yeah. well appreciated big change big change yes yeah. well thank um, you it's, it's just we we'll just work together and get things done that's, that's and that's what it's about and, so we appre that's what I appreciate it's all about. It. we appreciate it um so this is one of my favorite departments because it's all about cleaning up and i'm not going to bring up the trash contract because i know but when the day comes, I hope we'll we'll be talking about that and uh, with um, you know moving forward with the single stream or so. Once again, I'm not going to. It's not. It's early, but that is something that if we think ahead, we can really um, save a lot of money, help clean up the city. So I just wanted to put it out there to keep me in there in the loop with you. No, Council, that that's up. one of my pet peeves too is these recycle bins, especially when it's windy, they go down the street like a missile, everything's blowing out of right. them. So, um, no, that's going to be corrected in, in the next uh, refuse contract. Okay, very good. Now, I don't know if this is early or if it's in the next one. Street sweepers, what department do they fall in? That's, that would be under highway. Highway. So I will wait and ask my question then, but I wanted to thank you. Thank you. You will. Thank you. Any other questions? Now we go to, what's the next one? TPW Engineering. Howard Newton, Superintendent. Aha. 57 years. Well, Mr. Newton, I'll ask you the same question I ask you every year. How many is this? It's the 32nd budget in the 57th year. 50? What, did they used to do two-year budgets? Pardon? Did they used to do two-year budgets, or you just never had to no, come in? No, I've been here for 57 years, but I've been presenting the budgets for the engineering department for 32 of those. Well, that's, that's... And that's my opening statement. That's, <laughs> that's awesome. I, I, you've, got, you've got Council Fowell speechless, which is very difficult. <laughs> you, you know, Howard, one would question your sanity, being able to survive all of those mayors. I, I can I, uh, explain it to you someday. Uh, in ser all, all serious, in all seriousness, congratulations. That To survive that long in municipal government truly is quite an experience. It hasn't always been easy, but it's generally it's been a pleasure. As a matter of fact, you then started, uh, you've actually worked under non-mayors. You've worked under the town manager, city I manager here. I did. Which was Mr. Gilday's father. Yeah. Yep. Wow, that is a long time ago. Yes. Any other questions for engineering? Council O'Leary, speaking of 57 years. I don't think you'll be here when he's doing his 57. <laughs> I just wanted to uh, take a minute to thank both you and I and Larry for the work about streets thank that you guys do, because streets are one of the primary concerns in my ward, and you guys have been very, very helpful with that, so thank you. You're welcome. All set. Council Razak. Thank you. Good evening. Um, quick question. You have a city engineer. It's vacant and it's um, funded for six months. Is, is that posted? Is that something that we're looking to get somebody in there? Uh, my understanding is that individual has been chosen and will be taking, uh, becoming, coming to work as of July 1st. 
So is it a Brockton so the, resident or? Uh, that I, I haven't been involved in that process, so you'd have to probably speak with the commissioner on that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councilor. Any other questions? Thank you very much, Mr. Newton. Thank you. Item number 11. DPW Highway, Lawrence Rowley, Commissioner. Good evening. Good evening, again. Mm -hmm. Councilor Razak. Thank you. Well, good evening. Um, Mr. Rowley, so can you answer that previous question? For, is the um, person that's coming in as an engineer, civil engineer, is he a Brockton resident? He's or? not a Brockton resident, but he's willing, he's going to move here. I believe he lives in Bridgewater. Okay. Uh, um, so he'll be starting July 1st. Very good. With it, I mean, be so well, I'm sure we'll, we'll get to see him. So thank you. Yes, that, you will. Um, so I'll ask about this. I don't know if you have, have a statement or not, but did you? I don't have a statement. No? This, this, okay. this, this budget also is level funded. A few tweaks here and there on budget line items, but. I didn't know uh, if I went into straight into my question about the street sweepers. Well, can we get them out more often? What can we, well, is it in the well, budget Council, to get we, them out a we, couple of Yeah, we sweep the city four times a year. Um, the downtown area, uh, Main Street, Warren Ave, that, get, that gets done twice a week. Um, oh, they get, it gets done twice a week? Yes, it does. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't Main really Street know downtown. the schedule. I think it might be a Monday and Friday that the whole length of Main Street, Montello Street, and part of Warren, and it goes up to Forest Ave, Belmont, and comes back down. He, he starts at 5 a.m., so that's when he does all that, and then they'll go into a route. Um, all the routes are completed, and, this, and then they'll restart the whole routes again. And then during the fall with the leaves, then we'll, we'll hire some sweepers to come in. We hire four sweepers. So we essentially we do the, the city four times a year. So we and if there's a problem area, just call. We'll get it done. Okay. So it's, it's one sweeper that we own, or do we own more two? I thought we, we had we, more than one. No, we own two sweepers, we but two. I'm so short-staffed. Right. I, I hate to say that, but I can only put one out because I have to put other guys on potholes, trees, whatever. When we can, we put two out. Of the city ones, okay. so but the during the spring and the fall, we hire. Mm. We bring okay. some. Okay. We bring them in. Yes. So we have five sweepers out every day until the city's completely done. Okay. Thank you. You all. Thank you, Councilor Unieri. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, Commissioner. I'd be remiss too <coughs> if I didn't mention uh, a great job that you do and all the help and uh, support you give me for the people of Ward Three as well as the entire city of Brockton and. Uh, you know, I've worked very closely over the last few years with a lot of different projects in, uh, in my ward. And um, my people that have attended ward meetings have always been uh, very, very positive of the work that's done there. And I'm, I'm sure we'll continue to, to do that. So I appreciate it. We will. It. Not only just with you, with everybody. Um, it, it's a great group. And the street sweeper goes by. I went by my house this morning, so I just loved it, you know. But, okay. Uh, Good. Yeah. It's great. No, we yeah. do a great job doing that. We really do. So my, my question is, and I was looking, and I guess this is probably where to find it since it's the, the highway department, but... Um, I, I haven't seen yet. Have you put out the list for streets that we're going to be doing this paving season as of I, yet? It, it is together. I don't know if it's, has that been sent out to the councilors yet? Okay. Sharon, my secretary, has been on vacation for the last two weeks. She does have it. It, it will get out. Okay. You'll get it next week. Yeah, okay. That's what I, I thought. We have I the know. streets that are going to be done. Right. Um, and, and we did receive our Chapter 90s monies this year for that. We did. What was the amount? I just don't recall. <coughs> 2.2 million, I believe. Was it? Okay, so yes. about the same as what we've been getting, a little bit more yeah. than what we got. Yeah, from it's, it's about the same we get every year. Okay, great. So that will be coming out. Okay, yes. appreciate yes. it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Riley. I just, I just had one question. Um, <clears throat> under the, uh, the line item for capital projects, it was the highway capital outlay. You, you put a dollar in there as a placeholder, and, and it was struck, and now it's a zero. Um, do, do you know what the, the rationale on what that was, Larry? I, I counsel, I really don't. I don't know, Chief. Yeah, hmm? we're, we're Good evening, Mr. Conan. Okay, it, it, was, it was placed under a specific object code, Counselor, for snow equipment oh. purchase as opposed to just general capital. So okay. You get $308,000 for snow equipment. So went to that specific line item. Specific okay. Line item yeah. for snow Excellent. Equipment. That answered my question. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. I should have known that. Councilor Rodriguez. I should have known that. Oh, that's all right. I can't know everything. <laughs> you can't know everything. That's the oh. problem. 
<laughs> I'm getting, my mind's getting old, Council, so I, I forget a lot. <laughs> Uh, I, I too want to express how uh, you know how well you've responded to the issues that we have in this community. I mean, it, you're a breath of fresh air. I mean, it, it's something that, and I was I wasn't kidding when I said you know a lot of us didn't get that kind of response in the past, and we are getting it. So, greatly appreciated. Well, thank you. Um, the question that I have for you is that I I've noticed it in in Randolph and um, I think in Braintree as well. They've got these. Um, the sidewalk plows that actually plows and also shoots off the uh, the snow, you know, one in one direction in the sense. Have we ever thought of? Because uh, I know our plows are regular push plows, you know, basically pushing the snow along. And I know it's uh, probably going to be 90 degrees in a couple of weeks. Nobody's actually thinking of the snow, but you know, have we ever thought of, um, you know, maybe purchasing those things? Because I could see them. Um, I mean, if you look at the the way the sidewalks are cleaned and. At least those towns, they're nice and clean. It's not just pushing snow around. Have you ever actually thought of perhaps investing Council, we, in something we, like that? We have eight sidewalk plows, and we just last after last year we just purchased four of the snow, the blower parts that attach. We take the bucket off of the sidewalk plow and put the blower on it. We have four. Oh, so okay. Yeah, they, they I, 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 and I like that idea too because I used to see it in Easton all the time. It's just what what we're going to do is send the V plow through first and then the, the blower will go through and clean it up nice. But you have to be careful with that blower because, you know, if you get the wrong operator, it could blow everybody's front windows. So <laughs> it, it, we have to make sure we have the right person that, that might in not there be too bad, you know. and then wind row it in the wind row. So, yes, we do have four. Oh, awesome. And we did use them this year uh, a, a little bit. We didn't have really enough snow. We just used the V-plows, yeah. and they did a great job. So we did use them, um, I think, the second storm we had, we used them, and they worked out great. Oh, I mean, it does. They did a nice it job. Cleans it, it cleans it to the ground. They did a nice job. So, yes, we have four of those. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Anyone else? Yeah. And actually, while we're on this budget, thank you for not letting us snow much this year. <laughs> <laughs> I left you a little money. <laughs> Next item, please. DPW Maintenance, Lawrence Raleigh, Commissioner. I'm sorry, what was that? Renewable Energy? Uh, maintenance. No, maintenance. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Maintenance. Um, Councilor, this, this is just another level funded budget. This is the um, mechanics down at the operations. So I'll take any questions. It's pretty much straightforward budget. So. All set, Councilors? Mm -hmm. yep. Next item, please. DPW Renewable Energy. Lawrence Raleigh, Commissioner. Again, Councilor, this is the same. It's a small budget, um, level funded from, from, from years past. Any questions? We all set on renewable energy? I have two questions. Oh, Councilor Rodriguez. Sorry, Larry. I have to ask. Uh, in terms of um, the uh, solar fields, are we getting um, anything back? I um, mean, you know, are we seeing any any substantial returns on our investment? Because I know they're now what going into year six, year seven, somewhere around that. Are we? Has any of that stuff turned into? Well, Council, we usually generate out of that solar field. It, it, it it's in your mission statement for 2015. We generated $130,000 out of that. So now that's actually coming into the city. It's no longer correct because it's been paid. It's been paid correct. for. Yeah, okay. Correct. So it's actually generating income. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and my other question would be: uh, We have talked about quite a bit about the LED lighting. Yes. In the streets of Brockton. Yes. Uh, I know that there was a. Um, there's some thinking that we're waiting for West Elm Street to be done so we can try that out first or. Uh, but when are, when are we uh, going to see LED throughout the city so that we can save some some money and energy and make the city a little yes, brighter? Yes, um, I can give you a little brief update on that because of, um, I wanted to do it on West Elm Street, but West Elm Street is not going to be done in, in the time that the LED program is going to take off. We already did the audit um, on the street lights and the design. Now, I believe it's going to be coming in front of all of you shortly for financing. So we're ready to go with this LED project. 
So you're saying we should start seeing moving along? Uh, oh, it's probably. moving along. It's just um, I don't know if Mr. Condon had conversation today yes. um, with the uh, Mr. Paul Vessel from Real Term okay. on financing. So I, I think once we get through the budget process, then we'll be coming in front of you with this program of the LED lighting because it is going to save us some money. And, and it's going to it's going to look so it's going to look like City Hall at night. Um, I'm I'm very excited about it because it's it's really going to it's it it's just it's a different kind of light and it's going to lighten up the city and it's going to look nice. Yeah. And it's going to save us some money. And how long do you think it's going to take to get the entire city done? Um, I think they told me eight months. Eight months. Hmm. Eight months. Okay. Because right. they'll you. bring in a bunch of crews to get it done. Yeah, let's get it and done. They can work, and they can work through the winter as long as it's not, we don't have 16 feet no, of snow. No, we won't have any snow like because I've talked to the guy already. We're not going to have <laughs> any oh, snow. Oh, thank you. We're all set with that. Please. <laughs> you know, Moses. I get christened enough. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any other questions on renewable energy? Thank you, Mr. Rowley. Item number 14. GPW Sewer. Lawrence Rowley, Commissioner. Uh, councilors, again, this is pretty much level funded from last year. A um, few line, line items tweaked here and there, but other than that, there's Any questions on not much to talk about. Item number 15. DPW Water, Lawrence Rowley, Commissioner. Well, councilors. <laughs> Old pipes. <laughs> I do have a little bit of a statement on this. Um, this budget is in, uh, this budget's been losing money for a long time. So with that being said, I have lost six positions, um, four vacant um, positions with no body, and I've lost two bodies for three months because the budget isn't sufficient enough to support that personnel. And also, I just, I, you know, you've heard me before about this infrastructure, how old it is, and you saw two weeks ago on the news how Brockton had a water squirting up in the air 30 to 40 feet. That water main was put in in 1889 because um, when we cut the piece out, the date was right on the pipe. Um, on Winthrop Street, we had a problem. That pipe was put in in 1860, 1886. And just last week, I had a problem up off, off of uh, Woodland Ave that goes into the pumping station with an 18-inch water main that we cut out. And the date on that was 1931. So this, this keeps me up at night because I never know what's going to happen with this water main. This water main doesn't take a break. It runs 24-7. I mean, I've, I, I, I'm, I've said this to, before to all of you. So... Something has to be done with this infrastructure. Um, what bothers me a lot is the pipes coming up from Silver Lake. You know the problem we had there almost a year ago with that rupturing. We are looking into that. What we're finding I don't like either because of all the crossover valves. They don't, just don't seem to be working. But we're going to get something in place with that, and we're going to have to bring that back to you also. So um, I guess with that, I'll take any questions on the water budget. Councilor Ranieri. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I guess um, somebody has to start somewhere, correct? So I guess I'll be the one to start. But um, I think this, and I understand where you're coming from, is probably the process that we went through just about a year or so ago, and we were trying to set some type of a water rate for this city, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, correct. And there was a lot of deliberation um, with the past council, not so much the council that's here now. There's some new councilors. So... I think um, during that whole process, um, and we went back and forth just to see how we could set an ordinance to what we needed to do, um, and I think um, recommendations from uh, you as well as the new um, DPW commissioner and even through our finance uh, office through Mr. Condon as well and, and even with the mayor somewhat and the water commission as well, trying to put into play what what can we come up with, and, and we did come up with you know that particular uh, proposal that... Um, hopefully will give us some of its needs, but it's not going to give us enough. I think that's what you're trying to say here this evening in a delicate type of way. 
and I, and I think what we have to do as a council, um, we have to bite the bullet and, and we've, we really have to um, come up with what we can do to uh, put into place somehow to have a 10 year plan uh, and then some where the rate is continuously increasing but not dramatically but it's increasing each year um, so that we can continue to put more monies in to the budget here to do what has to be done with your situation and I think that's I, I think again we have to bite the bullet as a council we, and, and working with you and, and with other officials here we, we really have to do something there's no doubt about it I hear, I hear what you're saying and um, a, a lot of us because I guess we serve constituency and we, we have to listen to, to that as we listen to when we set a tax rate those are the things people want to hear you know they don't want to they don't want to hear that taxes could go up and water rates go up they think it's just money we're just putting somewhere just in, in keeping but we're not we've come to the point and and I agree with you I mean just to see what I saw on the news that night was like and I hadn't seen it because I was at work that day and was privy to the situation but to go home and watch news and to see that just blasting up in the air I said that can't be Brockton but it was it was I mean here here it was and and we just went through it not even what how many months ago with that same situation with with the shut off that we had in Bridgewater and that whole situation so um, I, I just want to voice my opinion that that I understand what you're saying and, and we've got to do something we really really have to we we have to also put in place and, and tell our people that what we're doing is in the best interest of them that's correct I mean that's what we have to really say we're doing it in the best interest of you in the city and and we we have to no matter what but I think if we do it in that gradual way it's it's a little different than if you're just doing it the way it was presented to us that other time with almost like an eight ten percent over three is that that was a little bit tough and we we swallowed into a different type of a plan but we need to come we need to we need to go to the desk and say this is what we have to do to take us take us to the year I don't know 2021 2022 you know what right. I'm saying that's what we have to do and, and then review it again um, our councils that, that are present at that time so I don't know if you want to make a comment on my comment but I mean I no, understand I, what you're I, saying I, I, you're it, delicate with it, it but and, and I and thank you for saying it yeah I um, mean because we're, all we're doing now is just playing catch-up we we have to get ahead exactly. to get this done because each and every one of us that live in this city own a little piece of that water main. Right. So when you own something, you have to maintain it. Exactly. And 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 even. Or replace it. And and it's happening to a point where you know it happened in the winter months, the winter month that we had, and our men had to be out on one of the coldest, coldest nights. Uh, I mean, really, out on the. That coldest was Valentine's Day night, council. Exactly. <laughs> I can and remember. I mean, and it there was they below. were. And there they were, you know what I mean, with another situation of the same area that had happened how many, you know, a few years before. And, uh, I mean, I understand it, and, and um, I mean, I'm not afraid to do what I have to do because it's still all being done in the best interest of the people of the city of Brockton. And we're not trying to overcharge anybody, no. but, but it, it's, it's time. I mean, you've, you've told us numerous times it's time. The pipes, it's like us. Our heart's going to wear out someday, and it's gone. You know what I mean? I mean, it right. is just what it is, but... Um, anyhow, you know, I'm, I'm with you on it. Whatever we got to do, we've got to do. So I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, Thank you, Councilor. Thank Councilor. you. Councilor Farwell. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mr. Raleigh. I, I have a comment, but I want to pick up on something Councilor Ian Erie said. Uh, it's not in my nature to commit political suicide, which I know suggesting raising any type of a rate usually is political suicide. But the Councilor from Ward 3 is absolutely correct. We've heard it from Mr. Condon. We've heard it from a number of people. We can't sit back and then hit people with a $200 or $300 a year increase. It has to be done gradually. I don't know what those gradations would be, if you will, but it is an issue that we have to wrestle with. And we can either sit here and be timid and do nothing, or someday our phones may ring off the hook because half the city is without water. And, and I'd, I'd rather have someone be angry because we very slightly raised rates over a period of time than have them angry because they and their family and the young children are without water for three or four days. So I just want to say I, I commend the councillor from Ward 3 for having the political and personal courage to mention this issue, which is, which is one that we politicians hate to mention. We, no one likes to raise any rates, any fees, any taxes. But you are quite right. Your, your budget is in trouble. 
uh, and it's going to remain that way unless something is done. Uh, Correct. So I think we've got to pull together and see if there is a collective will to do something in the near future, but nothing dramatic, nothing that is going to uh, put, a, put an undue burden on, on residents. Um, I'd, I'd like to go on to the issue of Aquaria, if I could. Mm -hmm. uh, and Council Rodriguez did yeoman's work. I, I like that expression. He did yeoman's work last year on raising the issue and forcing Aquaria people to come in. My understanding is, and I have a copy of the contract and I've read it, that we are at a point where Aquaria is supposed to be able to provide I think it's 3.47, or is it 3.57 million gallons per day? 3.81, Council. 3.81, and I understand that the contract also calls for them to be able to go 0 0.7 or 700,000 gallons more than that. So actually, they should be at 4.51 gallons if we called for them to do that. And my understanding is, and again, I don't know when we've tested this, uh, how we've made them prove that they can do that, they can't do it. They would not be able to live up to the provisions of the contract if we push them to do what that contract says. Now, I don't expect you to comment tonight. You may want to confer with the law department, but I'm telling my fellow counselors, and again, I commend Councillor Rodriguez and all of you who were here uh, prior to my election. If they're not living up to the contract, then we should not pay. The money should just remain with the city treasury, call it an escrow account, and then we force them to prove that they can live up to the provisions of the contract. And I, I really feel very strongly about that. Um, if it comes down to the fact they can only do 70% of what they're supposed to do, I suppose there might be a compromise and we only pay them 70% of what we owe them. But I don't want to sit here uh, through the next fiscal year and wonder if they are living up to their contract. I think we should force them to do it over a period of time. And I, in my humble opinion, we should not have to pay them to generate additional water so that they can prove they're living up to the provisions of the contract. Um, how we do that, maybe we need to confer with you and the law department and our legislative council. But I, I'm telling you, counselors, they seem nice people when you talk with them, but they're in business to make money, and I don't want it to be at our expense. And, and with that, I, I conclude. I don't know if anyone else has any other comments, but that's, that's, where, I, that's where I am with this issue. Councillor, I did anticipate this question tonight, and I did call the plant manager, Linda Correa. And the 3.81, they can produce that. They've done some upgrading to a pump down there and because of the contract. Now through the month of June, July, and August, what I read in the contract, it's 0 0.5 above the 3.81. I'm not sure if they can do that part. Well, if I, if I could come back then, uh, how do we, you know the old expression, trust but verify. Yeah, and, and counsel, I, I agree. I, maybe I we don't should doubt that maybe they Maybe we said should push they, them and try it. I, I don't doubt that they said they could do it. Well, can they? You do know it? what? I want to see the data. Okay. I want to see the pumping over a prolonged period of time to prove that that's not a fluke, yeah. that it can actually be done. And I really don't think I'm asking anything unreasonable nope. given the amount of money that we're paying. Nope. Uh, and if they can't nope. go to the 0.5 million gallons per day during July and August, that's their problem, not ours. Uh, so. I hate to be hard about it, but this is big money that we're paying over a prolonged period of time, and, uh, and I, I just have my doubts. So. Okay. Is it okay? We don't need to get into the current. I mean, no, I, th I think the Water Commission has done great work, and, and I'll, if, if there's information that they want to pass on to us, we can, I'd certainly be willing to receive it. Uh, but if it's not part of the budget process, I, I think we should stick to the process you've outlined. I mean, we can stick to the budget that it's certainly part of the budget that we pay Aquaria. I think uh, if we start going off one of that, I think we can get into another night on this and, yeah. and uh, bring it in. I think the point is made. So. And uh, I 
It won't be the first uh, resolve to, bring, uh, to be talking about Aquaria. <laughs> Welcome to the council. <laughs> uh, any other questions? None. Thank you. Uh, last time. Thank you, Mr. Rowley. And uh, again, I think uh, to file something late, and once we get into the summer to talk more about this is certainly something, again, most of us have a flat head from banging our head against the wall on this one. But it's a fresh head, so you can, you can flatten yours and bring them in. And we'll talk about it. Well, we, Mr. Chairman, we spent so much time on cemeteries. In my age bracket, I was worried, so I wanted to go on to another <laughs> issue. <laughs> Thank you, Council. When we had the Council on Aging and Cemeteries, there was looking at your end of the table. But, uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Rowley, thank you very much. Uh, councilors, uh, it's amazing what we can do when Councilor Monahan isn't here. Chairman, Mr. President, President Chef Good. Last night, um, I was remiss. Um, I wanted to wish a uh, happy birthday to uh, my favorite Ward 2 uh, resident, former Brockton High teacher Robert Emmett Sullivan, my dad, uh, who celebrated a big day. He was born June 6, 1940 at the Brockton Hospital to Irish immigrants, and he watches like, like a nut our meetings. He's there right now watching it. So, Dad, happy belated birthday. Uh, councilors, we'll finish up tomorrow night. It looks like it won't be too bad tomorrow night. Uh, be prepared. We'll then take a brief recess, and if you have any proposed cuts, okay. we'll uh, make those cuts. Keep in mind, cuts can only be by the grouping that it's in, uh, not by line item. So uh, if you have any cuts to make, we'll make them tomorrow night. Other than that, we're adjourned.